work with Aqua Security. Um, we help enterprises secure their cloud native deployments. And I look after the open source tools that, that we build there. Uh, and I have been involved in, with kind of containers and container security for, for quite a few years now. Uh, so earlier this year, uh, I published the, this book with O'Reilly, Container Security. Uh, you can you know, buy this from all good bookshops, um, but you can also download a free electronic copy. So if you follow that link, um, you know, don't let price be an obstacle if you're interested in, in, you know, in the material that we're covering. So these are the different areas that I kind of have prepared that I think we can, we can talk about. Uh, we have a poll, so maybe we can open that poll so you can start voting on these options. And while you're voting, I'll just very, at a high level, talk a little bit about these options. So they're kind of in the order of things that you can do at build time through to, um, you know, at the end, things that happen at run time. Uh, for most of these, I have some demos so we can uh, uh, explore which ones you, uh, you know, we can, we can dive into them. I, as we go through each one of these topics, uh, let's do Q&A about that topic because they're all quite different. And uh, yeah, so just go ahead and vote on whichever thing you think looks interesting to you. So number two. Okay, good. I see the poll. So uh, we'll ask that same set of questions again once we've done this one. Okay. Okay. So this is about building your container images. And uh, during that build step, you are taking a Docker file and converting that, or the build step converts that into an image that you then store in a registry. And at some point later, you're going to deploy that image and run it. Now, one thing that I hope you're doing if you're interested in securing containers is I hope that you are uh, scanning them now. That's mine. There we go. So you have your application container and you want to scan for vulnerabilities. There's plenty of vulnerability scanners out there. Um, some of them are commercial. There's plenty of open source options. My own team uh, produces a tool called Trivi, which you can use to scan uh, for vulnerable packages and language dependencies. So you've built your image, you can run the scan as part of a build step in much the same way that you would run testing, integration tests as, as part of your build pipeline. Why not consider vulnerability scanning one of those things that you do during the build step? So at least at this point in time, you, assuming that your scan is, is passed, that you don't have any vulnerabilities in that application image. At some point in the future, you're going to deploy that application onto the, onto the cloud. So you're going to run it somewhere. Now, the point about treating containers as immutable, making sure you add all the code during that build step, is to make sure that the vulnerability scanner actually gets to scan everything that's being that's ever going to be run as part of that application. So sometimes we see this kind of bad behavior where people don't treat an application image as immutable and they run something that adds new code into that application. Maybe they think it's a good thing. Maybe they think, oh, you know, I'm going to update my package dependencies to the latest version at runtime. Problem is, if you do that, you don't know, you've added new code into your container and it's, it's not been through that scanning process. So you don't know whether it's got any vulnerabilities. All right, so I think I have a demo to show about image drift. Th this um, idea of the image that you run not being the same as the image that you built originally is called image drift. 
So I have an image drift demo here. All right. So let me start with one Docker file that kind of looks fairly innocuous. Uh, I'm adding a script and then I'm going to make that script executable. And then the CMD command at the end says, when somebody runs this container, run the script. And what's in the script? Well, this is some dangerous stuff, right? This is exactly what I'm saying you shouldn't do. This gets run at runtime and is gonna do some some kind of package updates with apt and uh, I'm actually going to get a package here using the package. So let me build this uh, and I'm just going to do no cache so that anything that I tested earlier is not uh, not going to get picked up. Uh, I'm going to build from that docker file. Let's call this image drift tag it bad and that's going to build our container image. So I mentioned Trivi and I'm going to use Trivi to scan this image that I've just built. And it has come back with nothing. It said there's no vulnerabilities in this container. So if I run it, uh, image drift, bad. Now it's going through that script because of that CMD uh, that I configured that said, when you run the container, run the script. And this is installing some stuff. So I'm just going to wait for this to, at least I'll give it a few seconds. I may have, I think I've already got a previous version. Oh, no, there we go. It's finished. Right. Um, so, hmm. Let's grep for image drift. It's not running anymore because I didn't do that quickly enough. Let me run it again quickly. All right. So now I've got an identity for this container. I hope I didn't run it to delete. What I'm going to do is commit this. Uh, that's my running container. And I commit means take an image from what's inside a running container. And I'm going to call this run. Okay, so I should now be able to scan this container. And if I haven't messed this up, oh, I'm running this in a different, under a different user. So it's downloading the vulnerability database. I could do the same thing up here. It wouldn't need to run, because you might be skeptical that I've, it's because it's the different database, but it's not. Oh, you know what I did? I made this, I've used RM out of habit. I've got to do that again without removing it. That's why I couldn't find it before. See, this is live demos. Okay, now, any of you who are particularly into kind of vulnerabilities, you might recognize that this is a very old version of Bash that I'm installing very deliberately. And let's commit that one again. Um, oops, this one. Uh, to image drift run. And 
hopefully this time if I scan that, we should find, and we do find, some bad vulnerabilities. So this is, uh, it's an old version of Bash. You can see the CVE is from 2014. CVE is a vulnerability identifier. This is actually the identifier for Shellshock. So Shellshock is a very bad uh, vulnerability that allows an attacker to run arbitrary commands inside Bash. So this is something we really do not want running in our uh, in our deployment. And because we scanned, if we only scan the image during build time and then add code later, we might be running with some arbitrary vulnerabilities. So if I if I want to uh, behave better than that, instead of having a separate script to add that code at runtime, I would do it at build time. So this is running the same kind of commands that I was running in that script, just to show you that, that that's true. So update, installing wget, and installing this bad version of bash. And if I were to build with that Docker file, one, we'll tag that image drift better. I'm not going to say it's good because, oh, because it does still have a terrible vulnerability in it. So this time we're adding the package during the build stage and just takes a few seconds to install that. And if I were to scan that version that I've just built, it should find that vulnerability. And there we go, there's the vulnerabilities. If you have a scanner that detects vulnerabilities, you can use that then, that then as a gate to say, don't run this image, this image has high severity vulnerabilities. We need to address those vulnerabilities before we run this, but well, we need to rebuild this image and then we can run that application. Okay, so I hope that uh, that made sense and I hope that explains why it's uh, important to make sure any software you're running is added during the build stage and not at runtime.